suits, huh? I'll be with you in a moment. I keep having one recurring dream, Doctor, night after night. I keep dreaming I'm getting married. That's how I know it's just a dream. <laughs> Go on, please. Must I? I can't help you unless I know all the symptoms. All right, Doctor. Well, I walk up the aisle. Sometimes I even run. <laughs> and instead of one man waiting for me, there's a whole crowd of men, all yelling. I ask her first. She promised me. She's mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Lie down and keep talking. Dr. Jones will be back any minute and throw us out of his office. Now. What else is unusual about your, your multiple wedding? The bridegrooms all look alike, every one of them. Hmm, are your dream men anyone you know? I never saw him or them before. And I'm pretty sick and tired of only meeting him in my sleep. <laughs> what does he look like? Well, we're about the same age. How old is that? Numbers are unimportant. <laughs> but he has short gray hair, black eyes, and loves to laugh. I think he has money. I'd know him anywhere. Oh, oh and another thing. He has an interesting scar right across his cheek. He told me it was a saber cut from a duel in Heidelberg. Oh, <laughs> uh, pardon me, is. Uh... Dr. Jones in, I uh, slipped and fell in the bathroom. I slashed my cheek on a glass. Oh, well, he'll be back any moment. <laughs> it's him. It's he. <laughs> He's him. <laughs> no. Yes. It couldn't be. But it is. is. Is something wrong with me? Oh, no. Have I met you young ladies before? Well, you've sure met her. Uh, 99 nights in a row. Would you mind telling me where? Oh, pardon me. I said, would you mind telling me where we met? Heidelberg. Heidelberg? I've never been there in my life. Well, maybe not in yours, but you certainly have in hers. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Susanna Pomeroy, the social director. Oh, I'm, I'm Hutchins, uh, Arthur Hutchins. Uh, nice to meet you, Miss Pomeroy. And I'm Elvira Nugent, in charge of the beauty parlor, including manicures for men. Are you married, Mr. Hutchins? No, I'm not. Say, well, what's this all about? Oh, now, you just sit right down here until the doctor gets it, back. It, it hurts. Well, hurts. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you make a dream come true. A dream? I never dream. But I do. Enough for both of us. <laughs> out. You've been sewing for hours. It takes time to make a wedding dress. I'm surprised you didn't have one ready and waiting. Uh, I did, but I outgrew it. I put on a few pounds since I was 16. Well, couldn't you let out the seams? Well, I already have again and again. <laughs> have you figured out a way to convince Mr. Hutchins I'm the girl he's been waiting for all his life? Why don't you call him Arthur? As long as you're going to be married. But you haven't answered my question. How do I chase a man without letting him know he's being chased? Well, I honestly haven't had time to think about it, Nugie. I've been trying to get out this ship's newspaper. Oh, well, if that's more important... <laughs> oh, it isn't, Nugie. Believe me, it isn't. But when Captain Huxley says to me, Miss Pomeroy, the ship's newspaper has been getting quite dull. It needs livening up. And you're the one who can liven anything up. Well, what do I play first? Cupid or Horace Greeley? You're right, Susanna. But what if Arthur gets away? Some other woman might have the same idea I have. Now, you just leave everything to me. <laughs> the problem is, you can't just run an ad in the paper and ask him to marry you. <laughs> and who says you can? 
I can't what? Run an ad in the paper. Noogie, tomorrow, the Ocean Queen Daily will double its circulation. And do you know why? Because twice as many passengers will read it. <laughs> I don't know why you don't have your own quiz program. No. They will be reading it because of Dora. Dora? Dear Dora, Lonely Hearts editor. She solves the problems of the loved and the unloved. She arranges for unhappy people to meet each other. It's more fun being miserable together. <laughs> well, don't just stand there. Get that wedding dress finished. You know how fast I work. Thank you, dear Dora. <laughs> You'll be the first to know. Find out what, Teddy? Let's not pry, Miss Pomeroy. Not pry? Why, that's like asking me not to breathe. <laughs> I sent for you, Miss Pomeroy, because I want dear Dora to desist. A desist from what? Oh, trying to prove that the most important thing in life is love. <laughs> well, isn't it? Next thing, I'll be known as the marrying captain. Now, you just tell this friend of yours, whomever she may be, we've appreciated her help, but she has just retired as a member of our editorial staff. Well, you can't do that, sir. Why can't I? Because she still hasn't brought together the two people who were the whole reason for writing the column. You haven't? No, I haven't. You see... <laughs> you trapped me. That's not fair. Well, fair or not fair, Miss Pomeroy, let's unscramble a few facts. Now, what about this special column of yours here? Footnotes to the fancy free. To whom does this refer? To A.H. That must mean Arthur Hutchins, the Minneapolis millionaire. And E.N. Now, I don't find those initials on the passenger list. Now, who is she? Well, I can't tell you that, sir. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, no, I can't. Reporter's Code of Ethics. Miss Pomeroy, you are not a reporter. You're a social director. Now, who is he in? <laughs> oh, of course. It's Miss Nugent. Isn't her first name Elvira? Well, now, really, Captain, would I try to bring Nugent and a Minneapolis millionaire together? Miss Pomeroy, you would try anything. Oh, oh Mr. Hutchins. Isn't it amusing how dear Dora's trying to bring us together? That doesn't sound like Nuki. Oh, hello there, Mrs. Gardner. Did you say bring us together? It isn't. I noticed my initials A-H, but who is E-N? Me. You? Isn't Gardner spelled with a G? <laughs> <laughs> I'm referring to my maiden name, oh. Edith Northridge. Now that I'm a widow, I have been talking about going back to it. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Hutchins? <laughs> Call me Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you knew some of my family. Northridge Steele. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, you're a widow. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like dear Dora doesn't know her own strength. What do you mean? Well, I didn't tell you the truth, sir. E.N. The E.N. in the column is Nugie. She's head over heels about Mr. Hutchins. Why, well, I didn't even know they knew each other. Oh, they do. He married her every night in her dreams, even before she met him. Miss, <laughs> must you talk nonsense? Oh, it's not nonsense. Well, now I've got a real problem. I've got to break up their romance or break Nugie's heart. <laughs> oh, that was a funny story, wasn't it? Oh, you told it better than I've ever heard it before. <laughs> uh, tell me about that scar on your face. 
It's very fascinating. Uh, Heidelberg. I did some dueling when I was too young to know that. Really? <laughs> What did dear Dora write today? Oh, I stopped reading her since we found each other. Me too. <laughs> well, just two more dresses and I'll have my honeymoon wardrobe finished. Uh, do you think this is too daring? <laughs> uh, not for a honeymoon. He must be seriously interested in me, Susanna. Why do you say that? Well, he's been back for a manicure every day, and a man doesn't do that except for a woman. You can say that again. Uh, Nugie, are you sure he's the one for you? Am I? When I hold his hand, I turn all goosebumps. Can you imagine what I'll turn when he holds mine? Into a pumpkin. Uh, who were you writing about here? Warning to a wealthy widow. He's not for you, believe me. Dear Dora was wrong. Break it up before it's too late and too costly. There's no community property law in Minnesota. Who is she? I'll tell you after I see how it works out. Oh, uh, Cedric just brought some letters for dear Dora. Can I read myself to sleep with some of them? Help yourself. Only, uh, save the one I expect to get in a few days. How will I know which one? Oh, you'll know. It'll be brief and to the point, like this. Dear Dora, drop dead. Your former friend, Elvira Nugent. Oh. Nugie, <laughs> are you awake? <laughs> You want me to turn off the lights? I know you're still up. I can hear you hating me. <laughs> Can't we meet on, on neutral territory and talk things over? Are you positive? Will you ever speak to me again? Aren't you being kind of stubborn? <laughs> See what you're doing to me. I'm listening to you and you're not even here. <laughs> Help! Get me out of here, no deep. Help! <laughs> Gay, carefree, troublemaking self this morning. Is anything wrong? Everything. And Miss Pomeroy, the social director should always be gay and carefree. She should smile. Smile. <laughs> smile for the best person. I may never smile again. If that is a cue for a song, just forget it. And by the way, since you brought them together, wouldn't you like to be a witness at the wedding tonight? Mrs. Gardner and Mr. Hitchens are going to hutch the knot tonight. Uh, I, mean, I, I know what you mean. No, thanks. Well, aren't you happy for them? Would you be happy if your roommate had subdivided your cabin and said she would never speak to you again? Miss Nugent? Over Mr. Hutchins? What? Good morning, Captain Huxley. Phone breaker. <laughs> well, at least she talked to you. What can I do, Captain? Now, think back. You must have had a girlfriend that you wanted to get rid of, but you didn't want to hurt her feelings. Well, now, there was Evelyn. <laughs> of course, she wanted to get rid of me. She wasn't out of her mind. I thought so, too, at the time. I even threatened to run away and join the Navy. What happened? I did. <laughs> Marie, of course. Poor girl. She was crazy about me. But you gave her the air? Yeah, she didn't know it. She thought it was the other way around. How did you do it? Miss Palmer, only a cat would tell. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Huxley. 
You've come through for me again. I have? You sure have. This morning, Nuji is infatuated with Mr. Hutchins. He's her dream man. But by tonight, she'll be completely uninfatuated. Dear Dora brings them together, then tears them apart. How are you going to do it? Captain Huxley, only a cad, or whatever you call a female cad, would tell. <laughs> oh, Cedric, have you seen Mr. Hutchins? Mrs. Gardner told me he was getting a manicure. I've got a radiogram for him. Well, I'll be glad to deliver it for you. After you've read it, no doubt. <laughs> oh, and uh, Cedric, I may need your help later. Any time. To help Nuji throw a man overboard. <laughs> Cedric, what were you and Miss Pomeroy plotting? Now, just give me the highlights. Yes, sir. She wants me to help her throw a man overboard. Oh. Well, I thought it was something serious. <laughs> oh, man, overboard. <laughs> Mr. Hutchins, are all men so callous, so blind to true love, that they throw the right woman overboard? Not all men, Miss Nugent. As soon as I met Mrs. Gardner, I knew we were, as they say, meant for each other. I hear she's vulgar rich. Won't that bother you? A man can learn to live with something like that. Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. A certain party that shall be nameless keeps barging in where she's not wanted. Uh, a radiogram for you, Miss Hutchins. Oh, oh, thanks. <laughs> uh. I, I, I wonder if I could see you for a few minutes, privately. Oh, oh, of course. If it's about my wedding to Mrs. Gardner, she's like all women. Still wants a big church wedding, you know. <laughs> Are you like that, Miss Nugent? I'd get married in a tent in the middle of a tornado. <laughs> well, uh, that's all, sir. I was through 20 minutes ago, but I just want an excuse to hold your hand. I love that dry sense of humor. <laughs> Don't you? <laughs> well, Dora, uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd like a word with Nugie, and, and then I'll meet you in the lounge, okay? Oh, fine, fine. And don't forget, I expect you at the wedding. You may not know it, but your manicure has helped me win Mrs. Gardner. She has a real fetish about well-manicured men. Oh, she's a most charming woman. <laughs> Don't you think, Nucci? Delightful. I hear she never stops drinking. There goes that dry sense of humor again. Oh, I, I'll see you in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> We've all loved and lost before. You'll laugh about this tomorrow. Ha, ha. You see. Promises, promises, promises. It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. But it's true. You mean Miss Nugent dreamt about me? For 99 nights. <laughs> and then you walked into her life, Heidelberg scar and all. And then you walked right out. Oh, I'm sorry if I hurt her. Well, now you've got to hurt her even more to make the pain go away. Uh, once more, please. Well, now, if she thinks you're a fake and a phony, a, a bounder who's playing fast and loose, marrying Mrs. Gardner for her money. She'll be happy that she didn't fall into my clutches. Exactly. Well, it won't be as easy as it sounds. But you'll do it? For you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we've got to work fast. There's a lot to be done before you and Mrs. Gardner can face the sunset years of life together. <laughs> now, here's my little scheme. I'll... the strangest place to leave a pair of shoes. <laughs> Here I am, sir. Cleared up all my other duties so I could keep an eye on Susanna for you. Well, it's too late. I did it myself. Susanna, 
nobody's home. And I'm not going to the wedding. Wild horses couldn't drag me. It's me, Cedric. Well, why didn't you say so? Did I know it was you? <laughs> Did you commit murder? There's something mighty suspicious about that, Mr. Hutchins, who jilted you. What do you mean, suspicious? Listen to this radiogram he sent to this woman in San Francisco. Phone me, Ocean Queen, eight tonight. Must convince certain party marriage desirable. Certain party? That must be Mrs. Gardner. But he's already convinced her. That's why it's mighty suspicious. How would you like to listen in on the phone conversation when the other woman phones? No, thank you. I, I'm not an eavesdropper. I've got it all worked out with the switchboard operator. We'll have to hurry. The call will be coming through any minute. Well, who's not hurried? Another hour, and we'll be on our honeymoon cruise. Ah, there you are, sir. There's a call in from San Francisco for you. You can take it in the first booth. Oh, thank you, Stuart. If you'll follow me, please. Uh, yes, yes. Excuse me, darling. Yes, of course, dear. <laughs> There you are, sir. Uh, thank you again. If you only knew what this call meant to me, it might be the difference of millions. <laughs> yes, it's Mr. Hutchins. Put on my party, please. Hello, Arthur, darling. If you only knew how much I miss you. Well, I miss you too, baby. I think we finally struck it rich. The wealthy widow I met on the cruise lines be irresistible. Wants to marry. That's why I wanted you to phone. I wanted to warn you. Don't meet me when we dock. No more letters or phone calls. I'll get in touch with you the first chance I get, baby. Anything you say, Arthur, darling. Who do you love, baby? You, you, you. you ever walk and not run? You realize what you did to my feet this morning. Where was that? Oh, never mind. <laughs> what have you done about Miss Nugent? Oh, hello there, Miss Nugent. You, you, Bluebeard. <laughs> She's cured. Dear Dora did it again. He's all yours. I don't know what I ever saw in him in the first place. <laughs> I had the same dream last night. Like the night before. Like the night before that. Now just tell the doctor about it. Who's the man this time? I don't know. He was another utter stranger. But I'd know him anywhere. Uh, would you describe him to me, please? Well, he was in his late forties and had wavy gray hair. Lean, tall, and muscles like iron. You wouldn't believe how hard he squeezes. <laughs> no Heidelberg scar this time. But that's the weirdest part of it. He did have one, just like Mr. Hutchins. From here to here. Oh, pardon me, ladies. Is Dr. Jones in? I, I slipped and fell on deck and cut my cheek. Oh, no. I can't go through this again. You really shouldn't squeeze her so hard. <laughs> 